Okay, so now we want to talk about radiation and health. So what does radiation do to inorganic material and organic material? So let's begin with the inorganic material. So we mentioned that a nuclear power plant would have to be replaced about every 50 years or so. And that's because a nuclear power plant has in it things like uh, steel and concrete and all of these materials can be affected by radiation. So radiation does basically two things. It can break chemical bonds, so that means that if you've got an atom that is bonded to another atom to make some kind of a compound, when the radiation comes in, it could disrupt that and then uh, the bonds would break. Another thing that could happen is the radiation could ionize an atom. So that means it's going to knock off an electron. So now that atom no longer is going to have the same chemical properties that it had when it had all of its electrons attached. So in the case of inorganic materials, the radiation could come in and disrupt the chemical bonds that are holding the iron um, atoms together uh, that is then going to be in the steel that is holding up the structure. So as those bonds are broken, that's going to mean that that steel is going to start to become brittle and it could fail and it could break. Uh, another thing is even concrete. So as the radiation penetrates the concrete, again it could break the chemical bonds that's holding the concrete together and so then the structure is going to get weaker. Now what about radiation and organic material? So there's three things that radiation can do to you. So the first one is the most common thing that's going to happen and the radiation is going to disrupt the workings of the cell. So your body is made up of trillions of cells and a typical cell is going to have in it a nucleus and so don't get this nucleus mixed up with the nucleus of an atom. So this is the central control center for the cell. This is where the DNA is stored. And then as the DNA is copied, then that in turn gives instructions to the cell as to what kinds of things to make. Uh, also in the cell, you've got things like uh, ribosomes, which are little um, organic machines that manufacture proteins. You also have mitochondria, and so the purpose of those is to produce the energy that a cell needs. So let's say that some of this radiation penetrates the cell and it hits, let's say, a mitochondria. So then that is going to disrupt the chemical bonds that might be holding that mitochondria together. So then the mitochondria will incorrectly operate and maybe it doesn't produce enough energy and therefore you're, you're going to get sick. So uh, if your body doesn't have enough energy you're going to get run down and if the energy is not available for other processes going on inside the cell, the cell may not be able to operate correctly, maybe it's going to die and then you're going to get sick and die. So that's going to be the most common occurrence. Now less common is going to be that the radiation is going to come in and it's going to hit the DNA inside the nucleus. Now why is this going to be less likely? So imagine that you have a bow and arrow and you're trying to hit the bullseye on a target. Well that's not very likely because the bullseye is so much smaller than what the target is. So the nucleus of the cell is smaller than what the cell is so therefore the likelihood of the cell, of the nucleus of the cell, being hit by the radiation is not very likely. But if it does hit the DNA inside of your cell, that can be more dangerous because remember it's the DNA that's going to be telling the cell what to do. So if that DNA gets damaged or mutated, then uh, it's going to incorrectly tell the cell what to do and then the cell may, as a consequence of that, die. So that is also dangerous. Now the least likely to happen is the radiation is going to come in and it's going to hit your eggs 
uh, or your sperm. So if you're a male, it's going to be your sperm. If you're a female, it's going to be your eggs. But in either case, the radiation is going to come in and it's going to damage the DNA in your eggs or your sperm. So why is that even less likely? Well, your eggs and sperm uh, are a very small target on your body as compared to all the cells in your body. So it's less likely that to happen, but if that DNA is damaged, then you could pass on those mutations. And then your children turn out to be mutants, X-Men, okay? Most of the time, a mutation is gonna be bad. So that whatever the mutation is, then it's, uh, uh, a lot of times it doesn't affect the workings of the cell, but in some cases it could be deadly to the cell. All right, so let's, uh, and here is a little video that you can watch that will explain why radiation is bad for you. So how do you protect yourself from radiation? So number one, limit the time of exposure. So that means if you don't want to get a sunburn, uh, don't go out in the sun and uh, limit the amount of time that you are being exposed to that ultraviolet radiation. Okay, number two is get away from the source of the radiation. So don't stand right next to a nuclear reactor. So radiation is going to obey the one over R squared law. So we already mentioned that electricity, electrostatics, the further away that you get from an electric charge, the weaker the effects of that electric charge. The further away you get from mass, the weaker the gravity is going to get. So there's a lot of things in uh, science that have this one over R squared thing. So if you got 10 times further away from a nuclear reactor, then you're only going to get 1 one hundredth the amount of radiation. So limp, increase the distance between you and the radioactive source. And then we've got the shielding so that if you want to protect yourself from radiation, put something between you and the radiation. So in this uh, little graph uh, chart here, it shows what can stop an alpha particle, so that's up at the top, and notice that just a piece of paper, an ordinary piece of paper can stop an alpha particle. Now, if, however, the alpha particles are in food and then you eat the food or you, you drink the alpha particles, they can be very, very dangerous once they get inside of you. But if they're on the outside, a single sheet of paper can stop an alpha particle. Okay, then the next thing is, well, what about the um, uh, beta particle? So the, the beta particle was an electron. So notice that an electron can go through a piece of paper. It could also go through your hand, but it's going to be stopped by a piece of metal, for example. So again, beta particles are not that powerful a type of uh, radiation. Okay, then you've got the neutrons. So the neutron, you can see, goes through the piece of paper. Uh, it's going to go through your hand. It's going to go through that sheet of, of metal, but it's going to be stopped by water. Do you remember when we talked about the nuclear power plant and we said that the water was a moderator? And so the purpose of the moderator was to slow down the neutrons. So that's why water is so effective. But then you got the gamma rays. So notice that a gamma ray can go through everything, uh, but it is uh, going to be stopped by about one foot of lead or about six feet of concrete or about six feet of paper or about six feet of dirt. So that if you've got enough shielding, you can even stop gamma rays from getting through. 
All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we will conclude by talking about the origin of the elements.